Sand Slash is a Pokemon that's basically at zero usage. However, even with its mediocre stats, its base 100 attack and 65 speed allow it to have a little bit of fun. It has a pretty unique ability called Sand Rush that doubles its speed in Sandstorm, and we can pair this with Swords Dance to double its attack, and Earthquake now hits extremely hard. It can run coverage with Knock Off and Substitute to try to get momentum, and this spiky boy can really get rolling under the right conditions. Alright look, sometimes they make a Pokemon that has a banger design and then ends up being pretty lackluster competitively, and Sand Slash has kind of always been one of those guys for me. But today, it is our goal to get this thing to pop off because Sand Slash is amazing. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, and you'd be a lot cooler if you did. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So today we've got ourselves some sand in the forecast, and we're also going to be trying to do some slashing. But not before we're able to grab ourselves a little bit of a position here. So to start things off, I decided to lead off with the Gengar. Now, they decide to go with the Greninja, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go ahead and surprise this thing, reveal the Choice Scarf Gengar, outspeed, hit him with an Energy Ball, but it turns out they actually outspeed, which means that they're also a Choice Scarf Greninja, and they get the U-turn here. So, this is actually going to end up drawing in probably the best case scenario here, as Gastrodon comes in, and we just hit him with his absolute arch nemesis, one singular blade of grass. It doesn't quite knock this thing out, uh, however, catching a Gastrodon coming in, uh, allowing it to have to burn that Citrus Berry early is actually pretty solid. And we're also in a position where they don't even know that we're actually Choice Scarf yet. Uh, I'm kind of looking like I'm like Focus Sash, considering I was willing to stay in on the Greninja. Uh, and so I just decided to stay in and continue just throwing balls around. And seems like a pretty solid time until this asshole comes in. So Hydrapple is, judging off of that damage with a critical hit, that is an Assault Vested as Hydrapple, and this thing has pretty insane bulk on the special side. So, you know, of course I'm locked in here, I, I can't stay in, and the only real thing that wants to come in here is probably going to be the Lantern. I'm thinking maybe they just go for a Fickle Beam. I'm Assault Vested myself, so, you know, we're a couple of stylish fellas out here in our vest, but it turns out they actually click the Earth Power, and they pay back the crit by getting a critical hit of their own. I'm like, it didn't seem fair. You know, mine didn't matter, but you know, that does just over half as a crit, so I know that I can outspeed here, get some solid damage with an Ice Beam, considering uh, it's four times effective, we don't care about that Assault Vest, uh, but it actually does live, and then lives to tell the tale to go for that Giga Drain, and that is actually almost going to knock me out, I live it with 12, and now I'm thinking, okay, surely this thing switches out, because these Apple fellas like to run Regenerator as their ability, it's going to be able to come back later, uh, like healthier than ever. So predicting the switch, I'm actually just going to go for a Volt Switch here, and this is going to end up bringing in the Alolan Ninetales. So, this actually puts me in kind of an interesting position here, right, because this thing wants to click the Aurora Veil. You know, the good news is Alolan Ninetales is never going to surprise you. And while I could go into the Hippowdon and set up the Sandstorm, which wouldn't allow them to Aurora Veil, it then leaves my fat hippo ass vulnerable to a blizzard. So I decide to go into the Gengar instead. And I can outspeed here, go for that Sludge Bomb, and that does take care of the Ninetales. So there's a few reasons why that's amazing to see gone. First of all, it means that they're not going to be able to get up the dual screens in the form of the Aurora Veil. But more importantly, they're not going to be able to kind of reset the weather. And now, Hippowdon comes in, sets up the Sandstorm, and it's going to stay up for the eight turns with that Smooth Rock. So, they decide to go back into the Greninja here. And I'm thinking, you know, Gengar actually does still hold some pretty solid value here. And I know that obviously this thing is going to be Scarf. So, I'm just going to switch into the Lantern. You know, Edison over here with 12 HP is not going to be doing anything too crazy. So, I go ahead and sack the Lantern there, which now puts me in a spot where I can finally try to get something going here. And I'm like, okay, it's I'm done with this snow. It's about cold as hell in here. We're in like a fucking freezer box currently. And now I'm just going to go ahead and make it uh, extra dry. We're a wall. We're dry as hell. And now we got some pocket sand just flying around the air. So at this point, I know that uh, that thing is going to be locked into the rock slide here. Also, physical Greninja is super important data to note. Um, but yeah, this thing is definitely going to switch out. And this does bring in uh, the Rotom Wash. So... Rotom Wash also, it has a couple different options that it could be working with. It could be kind of a trick set. It could be more support with like a Will-O-Wisp. Uh, but it's here probably, you know, with the Volt Switch and Hydro Pump for its coverage. So, uh, as I get my Stealth Rock up, just never a bad idea to toss out the old late game rocks. Big Advocate, 10 out of 10 recommend. So, I put myself on a timer here where I would love to be able to get in the Sand Slash. That's kind of my main goal at this point. However, knowing that the threat of a Hydro Pump is coming, I'm not really free to bring in the Slash. So, I'm instead going to end up going into 
uh, the slacking. And I'm not going to lie, I really like using slacking. It, it puts some crazy offensive pressure. With a choice band, this thing does so much with like a Giga Impact, or honestly really anything. But I do come in and they miss the Hydro Pump, which is actually good. And if you've ever seen a guy just absolutely on level 10 chilling inside of a sandstorm inside of a Minecraft diamond house, well, now you have. So at this point here, I know that I can get any attack I want off here, and I decide to go for the knockoff, thinking potentially they switch. Um, however, this thing does just stay in. I do around half here, get rid of the leftovers at least, which is nice, and they reveal they're going to go for the Thunder Wave. So that's actually interesting. It probably means that they likely do not have the Will-O-Wisp, but at this point, slacking is in kind of a weird spot. I got my toes out, the dogs are hanging out here, and also Slacking's hanging out. He now has to take a truant turn if I do want to stay in, and I truly, I don't have really much of a switch to bring in here, so I decide to just stay, uh, and it turns out they actually miss another Hydro Pump, which is like, damn, it seems like whenever people use Hydro Pump against me, they always be hitting, but uh, it seems like the sand has gotten inside the washing machine and fucked up this dude's internal parts, but uh, now they decide to go for the Volt Switch. Like, alright, you know what, no more, no more missing Hydro Pumps, it's probably unlikely to kill anyway. And they do decide to conserve the George Washington. So, now they decide to bring in the Rabombi. It takes some nice Stealth Rock chip here, and it is going to come in on a knockoff. We don't get fully parried. Sadly, it doesn't quite knock this thing out. Um, obviously we get rid of the Focus Sash, that does not matter, and it does look like it's going to be able to take one more turn of Sandstorm as well. So, I'm again in a pretty weird position here where I do have three turns of Sandstorm left, and I'm trying to find a spot to get in the Sand Slash, and I'm like, hold on, this is actually a great position, because if I know a Rabombi, this thing is for sure just going to click the Sticky Web, that's kind of just what this little fella does, and I can bring in the Sand Slash essentially for free here. They do go for that Sticky Web as I get in Knuckles right before the web happens, just because I do want to conserve my speed as much as possible, and of course with my speed doubled this, at this point, I'm able to outspeed the Rabombi, absolutely no problem. I also know Rabombis, they, they tend to click things like Stun Spore, and it looks pretty good in this position if I don't knock it out. I decide to go for the sub, and that does draw the Stun Spore, which is actually fantastic, because I now get a free substitute, and the Sandstorm is just going to do my job for me. We're going to chalk that one up as a kill for the Sand Slash, though, on a well-placed Beanie Baby. And I'll tell you what, I'm about to say something very few people have said, and that is Sand Slash has a fantastic position in this match now, uh, where they bring in the Wishy Washy and they decide to go for the Protect. The reason is uh, because they're trying to stall out the Sandstorm turns, but that's actually like the best possible thing for us to see, because now we have the sharpest knuckles on this side of Paldea, and uh, we're still behind the Substitute with that Swords Dance. Uh, while the Sandstorm does go away here, it's totally fine being behind this sub, uh, because now I, I get a, take an attack and go for the knockoff. However, I do actually still outspeed. That means that this thing is running more defensive investment over speed. Uh, I am max speed Sand Slash, but if that thing is running max speed, it is going to be faster. So it shows that it is defensive like a lot of Rotoms are. And this Sand Slash is an absolute full form out here. They decide to go into the Greninja. It is something that can obviously outspeed me and knock out the sub. However, we don't even be needing the Sandstorm out here, baby. This thing can go for that Ice Beam all at once. Uh, the Substitute obviously takes that for us nicely. And then this is going to allow the full power plus two stab earthquake uh, from the sand slash to do its thing. And I do in fact not care how thick your tongue is. There's no way Greninja is taking that. That does uh, knock that thing out. And sand slash killing Greninja is a, definitely a sight to see. So we're taking some life orb chip, but at this point it's fine. We need just all the damage we can get here because now we get to deal with the Hydrapple once again. And... At this point, Hydrapple, we know that this thing is running Assault Vest, so it's probably like a max HP and special attack set. Uh, so I decide, yeah, I'm likely faster, but there is a chance if for whatever reason this thing is also running max speed, it could outspeed me here. So that's why I've been saving the Terra in the back pocket. I can go for the Terra Steel. That's going to reduce the damage from something like a Giga Drain to ensure that we can definitely live. It turns out, however, this Sand Slash is out here zooming. I not only outspeed, but the knockoff actually takes care of it. I kind of, I don't know, I kind of expected that thing to live that, but it's amazing because now we can just say, hey, take off your vest and lay down, buddy, in the, in the damn dirt for a nice little dirt nap. So that takes care of it. Now, the final Pokemon is going to be this Gastrodon, and this is exactly why it's important that we were able to get the chip earlier, and that is because it is now in range to face the, the Wrath 
of the most evil sand slash of all time. And we found ourselves in a spot where we were really able to capitalize on some on some plays there and put sand slash in a spot to sweep. And it's not something that happens often, but it is something that is super fun. So the sand St sandstorm team reigns supreme. And thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.